All right, hey guys, this is topic 8.2, sustainable consumption, and this is a definition, so it's something that you need to know. The, the consumption of goods and services that have minimal environmental impact promote social equity and economic viability whilst meeting basic human needs worldwide. So something to understand about this is when we're talking about sustainable consumption, we're not necessarily talking about consuming less. We're talking about consuming differently, so smarter, uh, consuming in ways that, that are, have less impact on the environment, um, that are better for society and better uh, for basic human needs worldwide. So that's what we're talking about with sustainable consumption. It's not necessarily the reduce, um, although you know, sustainably consuming things will reduce the environmental impact. So that's an important idea. And this can be anything from you know, using packaging, using less packaging. It can be anything from buying um, uh, products that have uh, um, eco labels on them, uh, more energy efficient products. It could be um, take back programs, you name it. So th there's all kinds of ways that we can uh, sustainably consume things. So it doesn't necessarily just have to mean that we're consuming less. Consuming differently is important, uh, is an important idea here. Now, we're going to talk about a cert certain groups of people, um, and so there are individuals or groups that actively demonstrate on environmental issues, and we call these people eco-warriors. And so, you know, good old Greta Thunberg here is a, a perfect example of an eco-warrior. She is, um, you know, very uh, dedicated to trying to... Um, raise awareness of, of the effects of climate change and the need for us to act as soon as possible on, on this, you know, existential threat to our civilization. So she's she's a, a textbook example of an eco-warrior. But she's not the only type. You don't have to be sort of like someone who speaks in front of the UN like Greta did. You could be somebody who actively, um, you know, demonstrates and, and um, does things that, that uh, you know, raises awareness to people. You could be an eco-warrior on, you know, your Facebook, Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever it is, TikTok that you guys use. So, you know, that, that could that could count as being an eco-warrior as long as you're actively demonstrating for environmental issues. Okay, we have uh, eco-fans. And so these are individuals or group that enthusiastically adopt environmentally friendly practices as consumers. So this could be as, as easy as, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to I'm going to um, do some environmentally friendly things. Like I'm not going to. I'm going to turn off the water while I'm brushing my teeth. I'm not going to let the water run. I'm going to um, turn off the lights when I leave a room. I'm going to set my air conditioner at uh, 24 degrees rather than than at 19 degrees. I'm going to use more environmentally friendly um, and more efficient products. I will, uh, you know, eat less meat. Uh, these are the kinds of things that 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 you know the practices that can actually help as consumers to reduce. Uh, our environmental impact, and and we call those people eco fans. Now, if you have a person within an organization that champions environmental issues, then we call those people eco champions. And so, you know, for instance, this is a this is a an email that we all received as teachers, and it talks about how um, we've had a massive reduction in printing costs over the year, and that's great because not only does that um, that reduce uh, costs, but it also um, reduces our environmental impact. Of course, you know, less less uh, paper that's wasted means less um, energy to produce the paper. It also means that the less trees are cut down. So it's you know it's one of those cases where where, where it's all a win 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 situation. And you know, so this is you know example of somebody being an eco champion saying you know print on both sides of paper, go digital, be selective about what you print, reach for the right paper, recycle the paper that you're not using. So, you know, this is an example of somebody being an eco-champion within the TKS organization. Now, you've got the individuals who actually are the complete opposite of the, the three individuals that I just talked about uh, earlier, and they're called ecophobes. And so these are groups that actively resent talk of environmental protection. They think that that you know, trying to protect the environment is is um, going to you know stop economic growth. It's going to hurt hurt people in the long run, and that it just shouldn't be done. And so this is an example right here. This is a guy named James Inhofe. He's a senator in the U.S. Congress, and you know one day he saw that it was snowing in Washington D.C. Decided to make a, a, a snowball and bring it into the Senate floor and talk about how the fact that uh, it's snowing outside in Washington D.C. means that climate change is not something that's happening. Of course. 
you know, he's he's not being he's being disingenuous uh, because climate and weather are very different things. And what he's talking about is weather and not climate. So just be, just because it's snowing or that it's cold one day does not mean that the climate is not changing. So he's being disingenuous and he's in the textbook example of an ecophobe. So they are people who do not like the talk of environmental um, protections and, and specifically don't want to um, have environmental protections. So they're called ecophobes. Okay, eco-labeling. So this is when you label products to demonstrate that they're better for the environment uh, than other products. And, and you'll see these on many, many, many different uh, um, eco-friendly products. And, and basically what this is, is this, these are organizations or government um, agencies that say that when you buy this, you, you know that you are actually um, protecting the environment in some way. And, and so there are, there are tons of these eco-labels. And it's something that you can look for um, on... Um, on products to show that that basically they show that 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 product is uh, eco friendly. Okay, energy labeling is when we uh, label energy products um, to show how efficient they are. The labels display information in four categories. They have the products the products details. There's a um, energy classification that shows the electrical consumption. There's measurements related to consumption, efficiency, capacity. And sometimes you even see things like noise emitted from the product when they're in use. Um, kilowatt hours. So a kilowatt hour is um, the, you know, it's basically the number of kilowatts that's produced in an hour, right? Now, this is a 12 watt light bulb. It means that it's producing 12 watts in one hour. It's using, sorry, not producing, it's using 12 watts within one hour. So not even close to a kilowatt. So this would take, you know, to, to, for it to produce uh, a kilowatt hour worth of electricity, you would have to actually have many, many, many hours of, of running uh, for this to, to produce that, that amount. Okay, so this, light bulbs are measured in, in watts, but um, kilowatts are important because they, um, they show a, an energy um, measurement. And that's what we're going to look at next is this. When you look at energy labels, and I'm going to show you three different energy labels, and this is something that you need to be able to actually um, read and, and uh, be able to talk about intelligently. So you can see that, that this is one from Australia, and basically it's showing you a, a star system. And so you can see that this, this says the more stars, the more energy efficient. So this is getting two and a half out of six stars. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not the best energy efficient. Um, it's showing you that it is a dishwasher, right? And it's saying that it uses 317 kilowatts per year. So if you're running this at as the way it should be run, you're going to you're going to use 317 kilowatts in a year. Okay. So that that's a kilowatt hour. Um, and then you can see that if it's using hot water, it's going to use 490 per year. This is one from the United States, and this is showing um, kind of the same idea here. It's showing you that, okay, well, this is the number of kilowatts that you're going to use. This is the operating cost per year. Now, what it's not showing you is any sort of star system to show you how, you know, how uh, efficient that is. But, um, you know, obviously the, the fewer kilowatts that something is using, the, the more efficient it is. Energy labeling. Um, this is another example, and this is from the UK, uh, not from the UK, I'm sorry, from the EU. And of course, when you look on this, uh, green is good, red is bad. So the the A plus 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 is the the top rating. And then this particular um, refrigerator, this is for a refrigerator, is is a A plus plus. So that's pretty good. It's using 280 kilowatts per annum. So annum is another word for year. So per year. Um, and you can see that it has the decibel rating. So it's, it shows you how um, how uh, um, noisy it is. It's showing you some other details, like for instance, saying the free freezer has a capacity of uh, 54 liters, and then the refrigerator itself 155 liters. So these are things that you want to pay attention to as you're looking at energy labels. Okay, now um, in sustainable consumption, consumption, companies, and this is from the IB, and this is something that they want you to know, that companies uh, corporate strategies impact design the design brief. So basically, the design brief is sort of like the the problem that you're trying to solve and and how you're solving it. 
Um, and that can be through, say, market development. When creating a market for sustainable products, students need to consider the following approaches. So we're talking pricing, stimulating uh, demand, and production of green products. So when we're looking at pricing, we want to ensure that the products have value for money to the customer. For example, an e-bike that uses a cheaper L uh, lead acid battery versus lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries are more expensive, um, but lead acid batteries are cheaper. And e-bikes, you know, these are electric bikes, uh, you know, which one is a better value for your money? Now, in some ways, um, you could say that the lead acid, because lead acid batteries are cheaper, but lithium bikes are also, uh, lithium ion batteries are much, much lighter. So there can be trade-offs that you have, um, and this is where you're thinking, okay, value for money. Do I need something like, do I, if I have a lead-acid battery, am I lugging it up like eight flights of stairs uh, to charge it in my apartment? Or, you know, a lithium-ion battery, you know, is very light. Or am I charging it like down in the, the basement where I park it and I don't have to worry about it as much? So these are things that to, to consider. And then there's long-term costs. So an example of this is incandes incandescent bulbs. They're very cheap, um, and long-life bulbs tend to be more expensive. So if you get, you know, if we go back a couple slides here, if we get um, an LED light, this lasts much longer but is much more expensive. These last less time but are a lot cheaper. Well, where's the trade-off in this, um, you know, how many... Um, how many incandescent bulbs will you go through in the time that you have one long life bulb? So, you know, th these are trade-offs. So that's when we're talking about um, pricing considerations and value for money, long-term costs, etc. If you get a less efficient appliance, like a dishwasher, let's say, that's less efficient, then you're going to be using more electricity over the lifetime of that product, which is going to cost you more money. All right. Stimulating demand for green products. So this is when consumers must be convinced that a green product is of similar or better quality. So you you need to be looking at something and saying actually that uh, you know that dishwasher liquid that is um, that is a uh, um, a greener product is is going to clean my dishes at the same in the same way that a uh, less green product would. And then is it com competitively priced? We just talked about that. And does it um, do we promote our green products? Okay, production of green products. So, you know, are these following that triple bottom line sustainability? So are you looking at the economic viability, the social and environmental impact of your, um, your product? Okay, so these are considerations that you need to have when you're producing a green product. Just-in-time manufacturing is JIT, uh, so just-in-time manufacturing. This is where you are um, producing things when you need it, not before, and storing them. What happens to your product at the end of uh, of a um, of its life? Are you taking it back? And this is you know things like take back programs. Um, you know, are, are are your products being taken back? Are they being recycled, or are they being dumped into a, um, a landfill? So you know, what happens to them when they're when they're at the end of their life? And then, uh, you know, what kind of radical changes are happening in production and manufacturing? Are you using less water, less electricity, less materials? Are you using less packaging and that kind of thing? So these are radical changes that, that you might have to consider as you're, as you're considering designing for um, sustainable consumption. Lastly, we're going to talk about pressure groups. So pressure groups are collections of individuals who hold uh, similar uh, viewpoints on a particular topic, for example, the environment, who take action to promote positive change to meet their goals. And these can be things like, you know, the World Wildlife Fund or Greenpeace. These are organizations that are pushing a more uh, sustainable, more environmentally friendly, considering animals, considering forests, considering our water, you know, considering our atmosphere. These are... These are um, organizations that pressure governments and uh, corporations to change policy to make um, make their uh, products more sustainable. Okay, from the IBO also, we have to talk about the implications of design uh, for the design cycle and product uh, cycle, depending on the nature of the appropriate le legislation. So when we have legislation from governments, so these are laws that governments pass, how does that uh, affect how things are designed and how products uh, go through their life cycle. So let's talk about the impact on the designer. So this is when you're starting to design a product. Um, you know, we have to consider cradle to grave or cradle to cradle 
uh, to cradle. Um, so for instance, um, when we are uh, considering cradle to grave, like how does your product, um, you know, how does it, how is it produced? How is it um, disposed of? If it's, if it's not disposed of, how is it recycled and, and brought back into the, uh, the manufacturing stream? We have, to, we have to think about uh, considering recyclabil recyclability or reuse of materials. How can we design something so that it is recyclable, recyclable? Or how can we design it so it could be reused, the materials within it could be reused? And this is where we consider things like disassembly. How can we design for disassembly? How can we make sure that we're not using, for instance, glues that are impossible to get off of things? This is a big problem with um, um, electronics is that they're very difficult to recycle because they, the, they use such strong glues that are not easy to get rid of. Um, and then we have to think also of, of cost constraints. Like you, you can't have something that's priced too high or it will never sell. So there, there needs to be considerations of the cost to the manufacturing um, and how to make that, that product efficient. Um, there's, you know, impacts on these legislative uh, these laws have impacts on manufacturers there's added costs uh, due to paying for products to be returned and recycled so like for instance if you do have take back legislation um, th this is particularly in, in the EU um, there's uh, take back legislation well the manufacturers are, are going to actually foot some of that bill so they're going to have to pay for some of that that cost for returned and recycling um, there's interested in, uh, there, you know, manufacturers need to be interested in design for disassembly and recyclability since they are most likely the ones pulling it apart. So as, as manufacturers, they're going to put pressure on designers to make sure that what they design is something that can be disassembled, can be recycled, because they're, the manufacturers are probably going to be the people who are, are pulling that part apart and re, um, recycling it. Efficient manufacturing techniques need to be developed. Material selection and reduction in products, so using less materials and, and more environmentally friendly materials. Systems also need to be um, created to collect um, products at the end of their life. So this is that, that, that idea of the end of pipe or, you know, when we're talking about um, the grave, uh, you know, how, how are you collecting uh, these products when they're, when they're done with their life? And then management of waste. How do we manage waste that's either produced during the manufacture of something or produced when we're uh, disassembling it and recycling it. So how, how do these, 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 this has an impact on the manufacturing. And then impact for consumers. So extra costs. Sometimes, you know, the, the extra cost that, you know, a manufacturer has to um, recycle something or disassemble something. So they're going to pass on that cost to, to consumers. Um, you know, product return, it, it, you know, it's great to have take back legislation, but if consumers don't actually return the products, then, then that's not going to work if they just dump it or throw it into a landfill or whatever. So that's, that's an important idea. And then, you know, there's, there's consumers can feel good about the fact that the environment is being considered by, by, um, designers and manufacturers. Thanks for watching guys.